Okay, so here it is. All finished. Looks pretty good. I can't see any issues with the board. Obviously we've only got a zero ohm resistor on the matching network because I just want it to go pass through right now. I will worry about doing RF on that later. So let's just beep the board out and make sure there are no shorts before we plug it in. Yes, it says ouch. Okay, so let's check ground and 3 volts. Good, ground and 5 volts. Good, ground and battery. Good, ground and ground. Okay, ground and reset. Good, and ground and the second LDO. No shorts. Excellent. So, I guess we should plug it in and see if I put the LEDs on the right way around. So it should be red down the bottom and orange on top. Here we go. Oh, I did. <laughs> surprise, surprise! So, red and orange. The flashing orange indicates that the charge circuitry can't tell the difference between no battery and a full battery. So that's common. Okay, now we need to see if we can flash it. So I'm going to start first with flashing it from the IDF and see if I can get the APA flipping color. So I'm going to put it into download mode. So hold down boot, press reset, let go of reset and let go of boot. So it's now in download mode and I'm going to now flash it with my really bad hello APA code that I wrote from a previous video on how to set up the IDF. Okay, and it's flashed, I just need to hit reset. And there we go. So the APA works. That's good news. And it's flashable. So now I'm going to see if I can detect it with the Arduino IDE. So I'm going to put it back into boot mode. Okay, I've moved over to my desktop. I've got the Wi-Fi scan sketch open and I'll go to tools and I've got my UM Pro S2 board selected as you can see and it's set to be USB CDC. Now this is a new feature that uh, Expressive have added to the Arduino IDE for boards that are using the internal USB. I've been working with them on this because obviously all of my boards, S2 boards, are using the internal USB. They don't have an external serial UART like the CP2104 or 02. So what we've come up with is you choose whether it's going to be using the external serial or whether it's going to be using the internal and then it can set the serial output to the USB CDC instead of UART0 which is by default. Now I have to choose the internal CDC with the download mode with reset and the boot button to flash it the first time. But once I've done that, you'll see that I no longer have to do that while I'm working in the Arduino IDE. So I'll set that as my port. I'm going to see if I can flash this. Okay, off it goes. It's a while to flash because there's 16 mega flash on here. So even though the program's small, it's got to write the entire flash. And in this case, I need to do a reset on it, manual reset. And what you'll see now is that if I go back to my tools, you'll see that there's now a port called UM Pro S2 and that now stays there so if I set that as the port and I open up my serial monitor and show everyone around the world what my SSID is that's okay as you can see it's working great and it's picking up Wi-Fi and that's without a matching network so the board is working Wi-Fi is working, dot stars working. So that's it. We have a finished board.
other than matching the RF network and getting my production boards made. So my plan is to castellate the edges of my production boards. They'll be in black and they'll have castellated edges as well as their header pins. Because it is a single sided board, you'll be able to choose to either put header pins in or you'll be able to solder it to another PCB if you want and use it as a module. Pretty exciting. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're new here, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out, including the reveal of the final production boards of these. To my patrons, you're amazing. You know how much I appreciate all of your generosity and support. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.